This is a particularly interesting product for two specific reasons. Number one, it's a product that was heavily inspired by the community, heavily inspired. And number two, it's using the same drivetrain as a typical whoop product that you would find, like those little 75 millimeter whoops that have like the ducts and you know, the prop guards and they're really small and tight for indoor flying. However, it's using these large 65 millimeter props on an open air frame instead. These props are nothing new. However, they are what make this thing possible and what make this class of quad even possible. Now, there are many other prop options. I'll get to that at the very end. But this prop is what I consider one of my favorite props in the micro class. It has been around for a long time. It's probably more than four years old. And uh, the first product I personally saw it on, I think, was the Parrot Rolling Spider product, this like toy thing that Parrot made. And uh, it was a cool product, but I don't think Parrot even designed the prop. I think companies were making the prop from before. I don't know who actually designed it, but I know that there's at least six different companies that make this prop or a variation of this prop. It just so happened that the most popular variant seems to be the King Kong version of it, which came in a very particular polycarbonate that tended to work really well with the design. So it became really durable and it performed surprisingly well for the prop that it is. Now this is a 65.8 millimeter prop, that's 2.6 inches. So that's a whole lot of disc area for something that weighs 62 grams all up weight, 62 or 63 grams all up weight. And as I've said in the past, uh, I recommend under 75 grams for this style of prop. But again, I'll get to that a little bit later. So let's talk about this thing first. This is using the half model 1102 motors, which previously I thought were actually really good motors. Now I'm not totally convinced, but I'll again talk about it in a minute. It says they're 8,500 kV, but I would guess they're probably more like 7,300 or maybe 7,200 kV, just based on the performance I'm getting, because this thing is made for 3S. It's not really made for 2S. Actually, it's very slow on 2S. I wouldn't even recommend you bother with 2S, unless you just want something that's really safe. Now, the board in there is the Crazy B 1.2, and they've updated this board. They've added some buttons for binding and um, boot mode as well as a new connector for plugging in your camera which is super convenient and super nice the camera is one of my favorites i think that this is this is the best micro camera i've used it's just good i really like the view it's super fisheye and distorted however given the field of view that you get i think it's pretty darn good with respect to the distortion and i really enjoy flying through this camera it's definitely not the best camera but the resolution is pretty good and it's like one gram so i'm really impressed with this camera and the radio signal quality of it as well because i mean it, i i'm pretty confident it's putting out more than 25 milliwatts I mean, this thing just performs really well i really like this camera however that's also just my opinion because most people hate this camera and would fly anything but this camera so take it for what it's worth the main update to the board or to all the whole electronic setup that Happy Model has done is they have added this 100 micro, microfarad cap to the thing. And this is not a new practice. It's something we've been doing on 5-inch or all the other quads for a whole long time. And it's to help modulate voltage spikes. It's like a sink for voltage spikes. And the issue that Happy Model has had with these boards is that they burn out. They burn out super duper easily, super duper quick with very few flights. Now, the last I spoke to Happy Model, they said that they were going to drop 1S support so that they can make it more robust on 2S and 3S because primarily the 5 volt would just burn out when you plug in a battery randomly, uh, usually within the first 10 or 12 plugins, usually within the first five plugins, actually. So this is their solution. And um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm going to start talking about. Actually, let's wait. Let's talk about the flight performance. This thing performs stellar, really does perform fantastic. However, this one performs fantastic. The one that I specifically happen to get performs really, really surprisingly well. And so the performance on 3S is, is about as good as I was able to get pretty much any of my own little toothpick builds. Now, this is a typical toothpick build of mine. I've wrapped the motors because they're prototype motors from another product that I'm working on. But um, yeah, so on 3S with the low KV, it works great. It works about the same as 2S. I have tried really carefully to compare and see if there is any advantage to 3S. I can't really tell if there is any advantage at all, really. I, I, I just can't tell. It feels like the same as 2S. However, on this particular quad, the KV is low on the motors, so I would recommend running it on 3S. And it's a 3S 300 milliamp battery. It, it's it's about the same as a 2S 450 or 500 whatever milliamp battery. They're essentially the same battery with respect to performance. It's really hard to squeeze more performance out of these things 
without getting totally finely tuned parts. And I'll talk about that in a second. But first, let's talk about the Crazy Bee board. So the Crazy Bee board has a long history of burning out. And this is where Happy Model kind of goes downhill and where I start explaining why this one that I have is good. And maybe you might not get one that's so great. So this board has gone through three or four revisions. And the very first one that they made, they tended to be pretty good quality. And those are the ones that I started testing and uh, prototyping on. And they held up to my punishment surprisingly well. But then they started making more and more and more of them. And then they started burning out like crazy. They started having a failure rate well above 50%. And they also started putting it in more products like the Mobula HD and a couple of other whoop-like products and a couple of other variations. Now this version 1.2, they haven't really done anything to help the burnout problem primarily on the 5 volt, except for add that 100 mil, mil uh, microfarad cap on there, which may or may not make a whole lot of difference. I actually personally know two people of the five or six people that I know that just got one. And the two people that had them burn out, it burnt out within the first four or five plugins, which may, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to burn out there. We don't have enough from the community out there to tell if this is going to be reliable. Now, this was such a big issue that GEPRC decided to make their own version of this board. And this board, as you can tell from the massive FETs on there, is supposed to be able to do 12S, uh, sorry, 12 amps and 4S on a tiny little <laughs> whoop board that's really impressive for this tiny board. However, let's talk about the performance of these ESCs first. What I find most surprising about the Crazy V boards is that when you pump the throttle, you get even performance out of all of the ESCs. This is regardless of the um, anti-gravity or any settings or eye setting. or D It doesn't matter what the settings are. You can't compensate for crappy ESC consistency. And so the, the Crazy V boards, while they might burn out, they tend to have really fantastic consistency of performance around all the ESCs. Now, this GEPRC board, while it may be able to do a whole lot more power than the Crazy V boards, I'm not getting fantastic consistency with the GEPRC board. And I'm still testing it, and I'll have more for you later, but that's, that's the best information that I have at the moment. But I, I'm testing it on a bunch of different platforms to make sure that what I'm saying is correct, because clearly I haven't been totally accurate in the past with <laughs> recommending these Crazy V boards. So I'm going to hold off on actually recommending this board officially until I've successfully done a lot of testing. When I took this thing out of the box and bound it and flew it, which I, I literally did within five minutes of picking it up, um, first of all, I was really appalled by the fact that the firmware on the board is still old, or it might be 4.0, but you can't configure it with the newest configurator. You actually need to use like two versions older configurator just to be able to set your arm switch and do other various things, or it'll just like freeze on you when you plug it in. I was shocked to find out that it flew so surprisingly well. And the first thing I did was I actually texted Sergio and I said, holy crap, you need to fly one of these things. I cannot believe how well it flies and how, how well they executed the formula to make this thing fly as well as it does. And then I just saw him just 15 minutes ago right now, we were flying one and um, the first flight up within 10 seconds, it just flipped out of the sky. And then he flew it again, again, flipped out of the sky. and then. We tried flying it a couple more times and it just flew awful, like I, just awful. I couldn't, I looked at it really closely and I could not figure out for the life of me why it was flying so awful. It just doesn't make sense. And then I realized that it's Happy Model. And the biggest issue with Happy Model is consistency of their products. Their boards don't hold up, unfortunately, with the volume that they put out. Their motors have varying consistency and so the one that Sergio had had so much vibration and so much issues going over 50% throttle that it just wouldn't work and it would just fall out of the sky if you tried to do a roll and I don't know if that's ESC failure or if it's motor failure or just vibrations getting to the board and it just gets overloaded I can't tell but it's a consistency issue as well as the two other people I know that recently received one plugged it in and it burnt out so while this is a really great deal for 88 bucks I, I mean, and it comes with like a second canopy and spare props and all this stuff. I, I don't know if it's worth the lottery and only time will tell when more people start receiving these and if we hear a lot more complaints. Now about those complaints, this is another 
issue with Happy Model. And I know I'm kind of bagging on Happy Model. That is for a specific reason, which you'll see at the end. But I am really trying to be unbiased here. And these are just real things that have happened. Happy Model distributes these products to people that resell them. Typically, the manufacturer supports the reseller if they get returns for defective products. Now, a number of these manufacturers, or sorry, resellers have have piles of returned Mobula HDs that Happy Model is not supporting. I know that they have sent some replacements to the resellers, but they're not supporting all of them 100%. And these are just boards that people plug in and they've burnt out randomly. They're not really the user's fault for burning out when they plug in. Now, Happy Model has been somewhat better about responding to individual users, and they do re like resend out stuff to individual users, but that's probably because individual users will go on social media and make a big fuss about, oh, my board burnt out within two batteries, and then they'll give the company a bad reputation. Which so I'm sorry for airing my dirty laundry, but... Yeah, that's the best I got for this product. I do think it's a genuinely good product if you get a good one and if it holds up to multiple flights. Time will tell if that is the case. However, it's an unbelievable deal and I don't even know how they're selling these things at the price that they are. So do as you will. Buy it if you like, don't buy it if you don't like. But I would say that if the board does burn out, the most suitable replacement is going to be this GEP RC board, which unfortunately doesn't have the camera plug-in uh, and it doesn't have a receiver built in, but the receiver on this is pretty crappy anyways. It doesn't have very good range. So you're going to have to use a separate receiver, but you do get a whole lot more power on this board and I've run it really hard and <laughs> not had it burn out so far. And uh, I'm running it on this prototype quad, uh, not prototype quad, just with these prototype motors that are just way overpowered for this board and this style of build and um <clears throat> it's been holding up surprisingly well the magic of this quad is this prop these props though based on these props i think that this is the this is the correct size build that they support i hope this was helpful informational um yeah don't forget to floss your teeth flossing is really nice i'm actually going to talk to this website dr johns about sponsoring my videos because i say uh, talk so much about flossing and uh, they create some candies that are really, really, really good. So um, stay tuned for that, maybe.